Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be making a custom hood for a 125th scale Ravel 69 Camaro. As you can see here, I've got two of these bodies, but unfortunately I only have one hood. I thought I'd try to make a new one by first 3D scanning the hood I have, and then design and print a custom one. I've made some custom parts like this previously, so I was pretty confident I could make it work, though obviously this is a fairly complex way of making a custom hood, but I wanted to also use this as an opportunity to test out some techniques that I can later use for more ambitious projects later on. Before I get too far into this video, if my idea for making this that I just explained wasn't enough of an indication, the process I'll be showing this video uses some pretty expensive equipment, CAD software, and a few hours of time. So if you stumbled upon this video hoping for a really easy way to build body panels or want to follow along, Please be aware that this might not be the best way to go about this unless you've got the tools and are as crazy as I am. If you find yourself in the same situation as I am here with missing one hood, there are a few low-tech solutions that I can think of. Those would be to simply buy a hood if it's a popular enough kit to find individual parts for, create a mold and resin cast a new hood, or although maybe not much easier, make one using styrene. Fortunately, this hood is not very complex, which will make this easier to replicate. I do like the look of the factory cowl induction hood, but I thought since I'm going to the trouble of designing a new one, I'd take the opportunity to make a taller aftermarket style cowl hood. Although I haven't made one yet, I was also tempted to make a standard base model style hood since you normally don't see model kits of the base models. The only first gen Camaro kits I'm aware of are all Z28, Super Sports, or Yenkos which is understandable, but I thought it would be cool to do something a little different and make more of a base model looking car. I might try that out at some point, but right now I really wanted to do more of a performance oriented build with each of these bodies. To get started, I bent some wire to create a little stand that I could tape the hood to. This is just to make scanning it easier. I'm using a Shining 3D Einscan S 3D scanner. To be honest, I don't know much about it. All I know is that it works pretty well, at least for my needs. I acquired this when it first came out a number of years ago, and I think it was usually regarded as one of the best scanners available for the money, at least as far as scan accuracy. It's been a nice tool and will allow me to make a mesh of the hood that I can use to help design the new one. If you're going to use the turntable function, you will need to calibrate the scanner. This is easily done with this little calibration board and following the on-screen instructions. Once it's ready, it can automatically scan objects that are placed on the turntable. I did a quick scan of the body to demonstrate this. As you can see, it does a decent job, though if I wanted to get every nook and cranny, I would need to scan the body multiple times and then combine those different scans into one model. Just like with 3D printing, there are different settings changes and various different things you can experiment with to get the best looking results, such as turning off the overhead lights like I did for these scans. I didn't need to use the turntable to scan the hood since all it took was one scan on the top to get the shape that I needed. This is the mesh that I'll be using. I loaded this mesh into Blender 2.8. I don't have a huge amount of experience with Blender at all, and the 2.8 update brings some significant hotkey and UI changes, so this ended up being a bit of a learning experience, though by the end I had a little better understanding of the changes. Thank you. 
As you can see, I'm simply retopologizing the mesh. I think 3D tracing is a good way to describe it. I'm using that 3D scan as a reference to get the correct shape and size. The scan makes the modeling process so much easier. The only real deviation is raising up the center section. I used a subdivision surface modifier to make the surface smooth. Although that certainly wasn't the cleanest workflow, in the end I got the design looking how I wanted. I'll be sure to include a link in the description to the Blender website if you'd like to learn more. The software is free and open source, so if you think you'd like to give it a try, I highly recommend doing so. I'm looking forward to doing some more modeling in Blender and working towards being more efficient and producing better quality models. But with the design complete, I printed a test hood using an FDM printer. The result looked okay. I'll be printing the final design using an SLA printer. However, with more settings adjustments and post-print finishing work, I'm sure an FDM printed hood would look great, even in a small scale like this. I really like how the hood looks on the car. The fitment was close, but it was a little too small and some of the edges are off. Rather than going back and modifying the design, I decided to just scale the hood up slightly within Preform and print it on a Form 2 printer. I would then just sand the edges until everything lined up well. The resin tank I used is an older one, which resulted in the print quality lacking slightly, though still good overall. It won't take more than a little sanding to get the surface smooth.
I removed the supports and did a quick test fit. The hood looked nice right off the printer, and with a little sanding would have fit great, however I managed to mess it up. I like to place larger SLA parts like this out in the sun for a few minutes to help cure the resin, but unfortunately it caused the thin hood to warp. I tried to fix it with some heat and bend it back into shape, but that didn't go so well. I printed another hood and added more support with the hope that it would make it less prone to warping. I also didn't place it outside to cure, instead using a UV light for a short amount of time. The hood turned out great, but I forgot to scale it up slightly, so just like the test print, it was a little too small. I figured it wasn't a big enough deal to print a third hood, so this is the one I'll stick with. It didn't look too bad straight off the printer despite using an older tank, but I definitely wanted to do a little work on it. I started by making little tabs on the side like the model kit hood has. I used some small pieces of styrene to do this. This hood was either just slightly warped or the design is a little off, as it wasn't quite fitting how I wanted. I didn't really want to try heating it up and bending it like I did last time, so what I did was cut strips of styrene and glued them to the underside of the hood so it bends slightly. This does make the underside of the hood look not so great, however other than that it worked well and matches the body much better. Although initially I didn't mind the gaps on the side too much, but the more I looked at it the less I liked it. So I filled the gap in using little pieces of styrene that I sanded flush and then sanded to the correct width so the hood was a closer fit.
Although it definitely took some time, I think the result is worth it. Yeah, it still kind of fits like a discount aftermarket eBay hood, but I still like the more aggressive, race car-ish look that it gives the body. I did a final pass with some 600 grit sandpaper prior to applying primer. I also washed away all the dust and then applied the primer. I just used standard gray automotive primer. This was a really fun little project and I'm definitely looking forward to making more parts like this in the future. Just making a modified hood like this is relatively basic, though using a similar process, it would be easy to make wide body kits or a completely different front end. When you're able to have a scan of a vehicle to work a design around, you're really only limited by what you can design and what can be printed. If you don't have the cash for a 3D scanner like what I used, you can build a laser scanner yourself for pretty cheap, and there are some open source software options as well. Prior to the scanner I have now, I built a laser scanner for around 30 bucks, and it worked pretty well. I have posted the STL file for this hood on Patreon if any members are interested. Like I said, it's not quite a perfect fit, however if you're interested, I'll have the link in the description. But that's all for today's video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.